Hey guys, welcome to dot point one point three for uh, Blueprint of Life in HSC Biology course. Today we'll be talking about the convergent and divergent evolution, which is just the part of this dot point. Later on, we'll also be talking a little bit about Charles Darwin and his theories. Okay, so to start off, Alfred Wallace and Charles Darwin both came up with a detailed account of evolution. Both travelled extensively and made many observations. They come up with they came up with one mechanism for natural selection. Okay, so uh, as a little start off, convergent and divergent evolution. What does that mean? Okay, so conversion is usually something that you associate to similar, and divergent something that's diverging, so different. So let's go into a little more detail on what they actually mean in this context. Convergent evolution is when an organism from different origins, which is subjected to the same selection pressures, and consequently they become more similar as time progresses, physically, not genetically. So I'm going to just make this really simple. A convergent, uh, the convergent evolution process is when an organism from different origins, different origins in the sense, different species, uh, you know, just a different common ancestor, and this this organism is placed into the same selection pressure as another organism and at the end both organisms become similar as time progress physically that is what convergent evolution is so once again let's break this down you've got a different organism I mean different origins and then you've got subjected to same selection pressures so two organisms or, or whatever more um, uh, subjected to same selection pressures. And because of this, you end up getting the final result where even though these organisms do not come from the same ancestor, because they have been in that same place, they have similar characteristics physically. So that's pretty much it for conversion. Okay, so hopefully you understand that. If not, I'd just say look it up a bit more. But this video should be all right. It's it's fairly simple. Just need to get your head around it. Now, since you if you've already gotten your head around conversion evolution, you should be able to get your head around diversion evolution. And let me just quickly explain that. Divergent evolution is when like organisms from a common ancestor are exposed to different selection pressures and consequently move further away from each other on a genetic scale over time. So not necessarily physical, but um, just genetically even. So let me just break this down as well. So you've got common ancestor, you've got different conditions, and you end up getting um, an organism which is further away on the genetic scale okay okay so we'll, we'll end that with there uh, we'll end that there and we'll move on to some examples okay so these are the examples that I'm going to be talking about now so first off for a for divergent evolution, right? We've got the ancestral kangaroo, which has led to the musky rat kangaroo, the rat kangaroos, the red kangaroo, the tree kangaroo, as well as the wallabies. Now, if you were paying attention, divergent evolution was the second one, which means that when an organism goes away from its normal habitat, but um, it's from that common ancestor, but it, it has different traits due to the selection, uh, the I mean, that has different traits due to the selective pressure. And what that means is that, suppose I had a kangaroo to start off with, hundreds of kangaroos. Suppose this one kangaroo moves away to a different place, a different environment. Now, when it moves away to this different environment, what actually happens is that over time, this kangaroo, which has moved away to a different environment, will end up possessing traits and characteristics which allow it to actually survive in that environment. And hence, it moves away from the, in the genetic scale. That is divergent evolution. Okay. So, moving on to convergent evolution. 
My example was dolphins, mammals and sharks, which are car cartilaginous fish, have evolved a streamlined body shape and fins that enable them to move efficiently through the aquatic environment. What this means is that these, these two animals, they're not probably from common ancestors, but what has actually happened is that because of their location and because they're in that same location, they have produced similar characteristics which allow them to survive in that place, in that environment, which is a streamlined body shape and fins that enable them to move efficiently in their aquatic environment. That is, that is it for conversion and diversion evolution. Let me move on to the points that I was talking about uh, Charles Darwin earlier. Okay, so I'm just going to read this and hopefully you understand. If not, then you can just leave a comment below with a question and I'll answer it later. The main contribution by Darwin to the theory of evolution was the idea that species can change over time, and the mechanism of natural selection explains how change takes place. This means most species pr reproduce more young than, can, than which can actually survive, because they exceed the resources required to sustain them. Population size is limited by competition within the species. Some traits are more favorable, giving the individual a, a competitive edge to survive and reproduce in the environment, which is also known as survival of the fittest. You must have heard of this before. And then these individuals with traits which make them better adapted to their environment will survive and pass these on to their children, their offspring. And lastly, after many generations of selection, more individuals will be found with the favorable traits as the population becomes better adapted. And ultimately, at the end, you've got this population which is so well adapted to this environment that they can sustain their life for years and years and years. So that is pretty much the theory that Darwin put in place. I hope this was interesting, and I hope it helps. Thanks for watching.